Hi everyone, thanks for checking out this episode of Pro Tools Answers. Now, if you are coming into this one without seeing the previous episode, what you're gonna find is this episode is the second of a two-parter. It's an episode on feature requests for Pro Tools. The conversation went just went on just a little bit too long to be able to put it into one episode, so we split it into two. If you haven't seen part one, go and check out episode number four and then come back and stick on episode number five after you've seen episode number four. <laughs> we'll see you over in that other episode. Take it easy. Uh, right, so the next question was surrounding being able to, to double click on uh, the things like the fader, uh, uh, kind of levels the the text I can't even think of the right term for them um, th if I share my screen to that would set, be a good idea uh, to a set, specific like pan I think it was talking about right pan, pan was specifically yeah but I've, I've seen this pop up on a number of different mm -hmm. posts that people want to be able to double click here um, and type in specific values to set our faders to um, it was specifically about pan was the was the feature in this particular thread yes but I, I can I think we can rationalize that that but it, it, it's not mixing by numbers is it you know we want to be mixing by ear um, and although, although you might want to get to very specific numbers here and you know I'm, I'm turning this thing and depending on how the severity of my mouse movements um, it's not always easy to jump and, and hone in on specific numbers but if you hold down the command key we can slow that movement down um, and move in single number increments. So although it might be easy to go double click and then we'll have a look for the number that we want to type in, then we'll type in the number, press return, it might just be quicker to move to the ballpark area and then hold down command and then just kind of hone in on the number that you want to move your uh, your your encoder to. And it's exactly the same thing with the, the pan, uh, with the faders, um, where we can but move in. Is Point there is one. a way to do it. <laughs> there is a way to do it. Is there really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so go ahead. We'll stay with your system, um, okay. Dave. Um, so, so go Andrew, to the you edit to window. It? Yeah, sure. Go to the edit window instead. Oh, you don't have to. You can do it right here. Oh. So if you go up to your output selector. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's that the way track. to do it. Of course, yeah. So right to the right of the word since is a tiny oh, little fader icon. Of course. Well, okay, <laughs> that is your output window and you can yeah. get to that from the edit window or the mix window. Yeah. And here, go ahead and type in uh, a value, just double click in the, uh, I don't pick your field, uh, left pan field. And you can type in whatever you want. And you can type in that value with the pans or the, the, the fader. Magnificent. Now, to get your brain to explode, there's a button that seems to be ergonomically designed for people not to click it. And that is the <laughs> green button at the top of the output window. And that shows the expanded output window. And what that shows you is the meter for the output path. So if you take a look at the, so the, the meter on your right is the tracks meter, which very often is showing the input to the track. But if you wanna see downstream, for example, if you're subgrouping, you wanna see your drum subgroup, easy way to see the changes that you're making to that fader, how they affect downstream in your mix, open up that, you know, click that green button. And now what I'm looking at essentially is your output is the synths, I'm assuming that's a bus, mm -hmm. your synths bus, and this is your synths bus meter for all the tracks, not just for all for this one, but for all of your tracks. So if you played, you would see your entire synths bus metering, and you could see then you could change that one fader on on the track on the uh, swappy synth, um, and you could see how that's going to affect the metering. So it's it's a great little tool for. For, for mixing and, and to really see signal flow, not all in the, as we're just showing here, but as Andrew's mentioned, it's mm. it's a great way to mix within the edit window. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, great stuff, Andy. 
very, very cool. Of, of course, you can do it from there. But <laughs> I'm usually stuck in the edit window, and I'm just making these uh, fast changes. And I'm yeah. very, I'm, I'm using the mix window very little, to be honest, because I have the the artist mix, so I don't have much. Uh, I'm not. I'm rarely in the the mix window. Awesome. So that one's solved. Um, okay. Knocking these down. Um, okay, let's move on to our next question, which is uh, all about phase control on the track itself. Now, we don't have uh, a, a polarity flip control actually on the Pro Tools mixer here, do we? But we are able to, to make one um, by, by using plugins. And one plugin that comes with every Pro Tools install is EQ3. If we just use one band, we can stick that on our first insert. And there we go, we've got a polarity flip right there. Do, do, we, do we actually need this on the interface itself? You know, uh, if, if I'm going to be really tweaky with mixes, one of the things that I do sometimes is I will put, um, uh, what is it, a time adjuster on all of the tracks so like for example you could um on let's say the last insert it doesn't matter where you put it but let's put it let's say on the last insert dave um if you held down the option key and chose time adjuster uh let me do that uh, on on J. My, my last insert so i'm putting time adjuster on And what you can do here, and the reason why I often will go with this, and, and I don't do this on every mix, but if you want to get really tweaky with phase, not only can you invert phase on, on a channel by channel basis, mm -hmm. but you can also then nudge by samples, right? So you can you can get you know beyond just a, a dumb phase inversion, which is yeah. basically what that what that phi button does. Um, you know, that's a butter knife. If you want to then go into the sample level and, and nudge them so that they are cohesive or not, it depends on how you want to get into it. But you're, you're, the poster is 100% right and zero. Is that the Pro Tools mixer doesn't have a phase inversion button, which is different than a lot of other mixers, but you can get there from a lot, in, in a lot of, almost every EQ that I can think of has a phase inversion button on it. Um, mm. Trim does, um, time adjuster does. There's just a lot of ways you can get to it. Just throw it on on an insert and flip the phase, and you're off to the races. Yeah, so it, it it it's not even really a workaround. It's just one of those controls that not everyone will need in every session. Why not just will not clutter up the interface? Which in, incidentally is is some of the uh, some of the complaints that the Pro Tools interface is cluttered. It's it's one I don't get. I think it's beautifully laid out. But um, you know, we don't need if if you don't need a control every time. Let's just have a a plugin where when you need it, you put it on the insert, right? And we've got ten inserts there, and if you're using all all ten of those, you're probably doing something wrong. <clears throat> I would I would say you probably need to take a look at your addiction to processing <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what I'm was gonna, going to be the comment that would come back from I'm that gonna, one no I'm let's get posts on that one <laughs> <laughs> well whenever I've got whenever I'm looking at student sessions whenever there's more than one entire bank of five plugins it's there's there's never a justification for another bank of five plugins unless you're being really ultra creative i haven't ever come across well, a good uh, reason to have all the all I, 10 I, yet I, I i tend to disagree sadly yeah. i've done that <laughs> <laughs> i've done it too but but also um, i mean you could a b plugins as well so you could build up two banks of different sets of plugins okay, and yeah. stuff like that so so i think there are uh, and there are a number of locations where, where i actually use it and uh, uh and sense uh, I tend to use uh, quite a lot of different reverbs that I can then control individually yeah. uh, and uh, organically. So uh, I mean, there are always ways to to get more insert slots. If you if you really need them, you could <laughs> just uh, forward it to a, yeah, to, right. to a bus and and, and yep. do even more mm -hmm. processing. Mm. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, I've I've never I've never had a good result come from using. <laughs> ten you know, I, I'll just, be I'll be honest. Is that I I have gotten myself into places where I've got a track that's got you know all ten inserts, mm. and I'm like, it's just not sounding good. And I just go back and I bypass all the inserts on it. Sounds fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> We've done. We've all done that. I think. <laughs> um, okay, uh, this was an interesting one. Um, as, as my feature, I would like professional metering, please. Fantastic. <laughs> who who would like to talk about professional metering? Because I think one one of the big benefits of using a the, the industry standard app is that it's responded to the the indus, the, the professional community and provided a very rich. Um, tapestry of metering options. Yeah, I'm just uh, curious about what they mean with professional metering because I, th I think um, uh, I think it's all there. What you what you need, with the exception of, of of just one thing, that would maybe be a love meter. But mm. we have that in 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 plugins instead. Uh, <coughs> so Andy, I think um, I think you you uh, this might be your uh, table here. Do you want to go through them or should I? Uh, what what I've talked enough. Go ahead. Okay, so um, there's a couple of, um, of ways to to take a look at what metering we actually have in Pro Tools. A good start is set up preferences and go in under the metering tab where you get to see all of your different uh, meters. And you have basically got two different meters going on at the same time for your tracks and separate metering for your masters. And as you can see, I'm in sample peak here for, for my track meters. But there's a couple of them uh, here, Pro Tools Classic or Linear or Linear Extended, uh, the RMS or VU meters, digital VUs, mm -hmm. different PPM style meters for different countries. Uh, and, we Di and different standards as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, and we got the, the, the loudness metering uh, uh, type uh, in K scale 12, 14 and 20. Mm -hmm. And even if you're working with uh, with a venue system, you can get the, the venue RMS or peak meters from, from the venue so that they are exactly corresponding to, to, to this. And I think it's uh, just a, a great a collection of metering here for, for our meters. And it's not only that, I can go in and, and customize my metering. Mm. So let's uh, look at the, 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 the sample peak here, which has uh, a decay rate of 40 decibels in uh, one and a half seconds. And if I really want the meters to fall down slower than this uh, mm. or faster, I can set the time here. And I can also set exactly where the 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 zero what the d zero yeah. db is showing um, and the integration time if i wanted to have that as well so that the peak the meter will actually react a bit slower to incoming signals so uh, like in the way that the vu meter does which has a, a bit of integration time so that would keep levels a bit higher in, in the radio uh, and you can also set and this is a great one yeah, you can set this. where where your color break is and this mm -hmm. is especially good when you're recording and you can see here my color break high is set to to minus six and my color break low is set to minus 18. Mm -hmm. so i can set that so that i have a visual reference it actually changes color where i want the signal to be and usually i will record that around minus 18 because if i'm recording at 24 bits uh, or 32-bit float that gives me enough headroom um, uh, and or, or all the headroom that I need. And I can make this settings for, for my meters. And you can also set to how much peak hold you want to have, three seconds, infinite or, or none, uh, and also your calibration reference level. So I would say that's a lot of metering stuff. It's insane, Another isn't way. It? Are there any meters that are missing from that? In at the LUFS, yeah, Lux. I think oh, Lux Lux is, metering, is the big yeah. one. Uh, one. One more thing uh, before I uh, leave this to to Andy to to talk about the Lufs metering is that you can you don't have to go into set the preference to change your metering. You can just mm. right click any yeah. meter and change them instantly. So if I wanted to have Pro Tools Classic, I can have that on my tracks and then go back to Sample Peak without being uh, able. Uh, I don't need to go to to yeah. the preferences. So we can do it all on the fly. Yeah. Oh, completely. So um, did you want so to talk Andy, about how we can get to LUFs? Yeah, so there's a couple things. Um, let me throw something up here. Um, 
so there's a couple things to, to take a look at over here. So one of the things that I would recommend, and this is just a very simple voiceover setting, um, notice here um, that I've got audio tracks, aux tracks, and master faders. This is something that when I was playing around with it, it really bugged me, and now I love it. Because to be honest, my metering on normal tracks, I like to have it the way I hear it, which is more like RMS, root mean squared. Mm. But I on my on my master fader, I need to know if it's going to clip. So I want to mm. see peak, right? So I want I want to see two different meters in Pro Tools at the same time. The first time I tried it, it really messed me up. But but after I got used to it, it was like this is the greatest thing in the world. So if you <laughs> go to your metering, um, you uncheck this track and, and, and master types. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll usually set my track to be RMS or, or whatever you're comfortable with. And then I'll generally leave sample peak for my master faders so that at this, um, you can see here, uh, let me change it so you can actually see a difference. Let me change this to linear. And you can see here, which by the way, linear I never use, but you can see here that there's a difference between all my other tracks and my master fader. Um, and so I'm going to change this back to RMS because it just makes me sad. Um, the other thing that I would do is I want to show you that you can also show, and because we're talking about professional metering, um, you can also show your gain reduction on the actual track. So, so if you had, for example, on this track, I've got <laughs> six inserts or five inserts. So, so I want to insert a user. But you can see here I've got a whole bunch of different I've got compressors, I've got a whole, whole bunch of things, including uh, some gain reduction on this track. And you can see over here, if I go ahead and right click over here, you can show gain reduction. I can show only mm -hmm. compression, I can show only expansion, or I can show what I normally do is all gain reduction summed together. And right now you see that gain reduction go down. Why? Because I've got a noise gate on this, right? So I've got an expander on this. So this is, this is gonna show me the entire aggregated mm -hmm. Um, uh, uh, gain reduction for this. So that's that's one thing. And so this mixer gives you a ton of information. But yes. if you need LUFs, there's two ways you can do it. And probably one of the ways is going to be to on the usually I'll put this on the um, on the the main bus um, on the on the last master fader in, in my yeah. system. I will go over here and I'll go to dynamics and I will go to pro limiter. And your pro limiter is going to come on is going to show you as you, as you play back, I'll go ahead and uh, play the system, and you're going to see here that it gives you a running total of, of your levels, including you see that your peak. I've got active Bring that down. Um, you can see here that I've got my, my true peak, which is important. Mm -hmm. um, you've got your integrated LUFs, which is yeah, it's not, not in bad shape at all. Um, for, for So you want to be at about minus 15 LUFs for, for YouTube, which is, I think, the work that I was doing. So I'm right in the ballpark, and it, and it gives me basically a running tally of, of where I need to be. Now, there's another place you can do it. So if you've got a mix, and let's say this is my, my mixed down um, little guy, I can also go up into Audio Suite. And if you have the Pro Limiter plugin, you also have another really useful little plugin that gets installed at the same. If I go to Other, Pro loudness analyzer. And you can get a sense over here, if I just go ahead and analyze, it will take, for example, my final my final bounce, which I think this is, I can analyze it, zoomp, and it will tell me that for the whole yeah. thing, my integrated left is minus 14.6, my true peak is my, minus four, so I'm in the ballpark, and I can do that. If I want to change it, I can you know use it, or it can do a number of different things, but that's another way to get to metering. Is yeah, that included with any of the installs, or is it, there a specific plugin that needs to be purchased? Yes. So, yeah. so um, <laughs> the pro. By the way, if you played around with the Pro Series uh, plugins, do yourself a favor and get used to them because they are really, yeah. really good. Yeah. Um, so you've got your Pro uh, Compressor, your Pro Expander, and your Pro Limiter. Um, the Pro Limiter is 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 the one that I'm using on on the main bus to to see a, a real time kind of graph. Um, but if you install the Pro plugin, then what comes with it, what's installed at the same time, is the uh, Pro Limiter Loudness Analyzer, which is it's worth its weight in gold. 
And that's a uh, part of, of the, uh, the complete uh, plugin bundle that uh, you get if you have an active sus subscription, right? That's right. Yep. Mm. Uh, yeah, great stuff there. And that's uh, not even in real time. It's um, faster than real time. So it's a, a great feature. Yeah. There's also another free plugin that I can mention by TB Pro Audio. Um, it's a DP Meter 2 that, that has some, some other data that you can see. I specifically use it for Crest Factor. Um, I'll just share my screen. I don't know whether you've seen this. You probably have seen this one. But. Now let me unshare. So there you go. So I've got that one. And I'll typically have... That's um, a good meter. Yeah, I'll typically have Pro Limiter and I'll have this one on, uh, as you say, on the, on the master fader right at the end. So it's not affecting any of the signal. Um, it's just monitoring what's going on after all of your your two bus processing, um, and those those two together just provide anything everything that you want to see. You know, one of the things <clears throat> about Pro Tools that, um, and again, you know, I, I work for Avid, so you can take everything I say with a grain of salt. But one <laughs> of the great things about about Pro Tools' position in the industry is that we've got just such a great family of people who want to make plugins that work for for us mm. so so basically you know you've got all of these aax plugins made by the best and they know the professionals are going to be using them so you can find really really good plugins it's hard to find a bad one to be quite honest um and and if it's an aax plugin you know that it's going to repeat report its latency and it'll be compensated for and and, and it won't you know mess around with your mix as as yeah. sometimes um you or or vst plugins can um and your your mix just stays stays cohesive if you turn on automatic compensation. So yeah, that's a that's a fantastic uh, meter. Yeah, cool. Uh, and I think we answered that question. I think so. Can I throw one other thing in? Um, just because metering um, reminds me of visual feedback, and visual feedback um, reminds me of this. Um, Dave, if you can let me. Share. Sorry. Yes. Of course. <clears throat> so let me shift to, how do I do this? Um, Am I sharing now? Nope. Are you guys seeing me? How do I? Do? Where did my Zoom controls go? Oh, there we go. Now are you sharing? Oh, uh, there we go. So one of the things, as far as visual feedback, one of the things that can mess you up is if you have, like I do, a lot of times I'll put different EQs at different stages because having all your EQ in one plugin sometimes mm -hmm. won't give you the result that you want. But you can kind of lose track of what your final aggregate EQ is doing. And if you go down here, and I, this is a, a mix window only view. Um, if you go down to your mix window, uh, view selector down here in the lower left corner and you choose E curve. What you want to see here is all of your EQs together. So this complex curve is, come on, this plugin plus this plugin, plus I think another one, right? So if I was to change this one plugin, you're gonna see that that is reflected over there in my EQ curve, and I can see all yeah. the stuff that's going on. If I change this one, if I go over here, you can see that it's changing that, that EQ. That is an amazing amount of very useful visual feedback coming right back to you, and that's the EQ, um, EQ view in, uh, EQ curve view, sorry. Yeah, uh, that's in a great point. Window. Oh, yeah. it's so useful. It, uh, it, and it one is. more, and one more last. Uh, do do we have time for uh, for what, what do you call them? A sugar cube, Andy. <laughs> sugar cube, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, so let's stick with your screen here, and I'll just explain okay. it. You know what I'm talking about. So if you really no want to about. have <laughs> a little bit more metering, more visual feedback, you can Control Option Command click a meter <laughs> to make them just a little bit wider and fatter. Uh, right. So Andy, w why don't you go ahead and do that? Okay, so again, it's it's Power Claw. And you click on the meter, and it will will get twice as wide. Um, and this is I, this is not nothing, by the way. Um, <laughs> it, you know, people do you know sometimes don't like the the view. Now, what I like actually about wide metering is is not the way that it looks in the mix window, but in the edit window, it really makes a difference. Yeah, because you you turn on that really does, especially with mono tracks gives me just a lot more real estate it does take up a little bit more of your window so you get a little bit less of your track by you know by pixels but it, it's it's actually a very comfortable way for me to look in the in the uh in the edit window as well 
But yes, yeah. so that's power claw yeah. and click on the meter. And of course, uh, any setting that you do, it's not forever. You can quickly change it back at any time. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Now the, the the EQ output, the, the the aggregate EQ output, and the aggregate uh, dynamic control outputs, you know, the gain reduction mm -hmm. and whatnot, yep. they have to be programmed in by the developers, don't they? They're not. Every plugin doesn't allow it. Right. So so this is one thing that is is really important is that understand that AAX plugins before they find their way into Pro Tools are rigorously vetted by Avid. Um, and one of the things that is, is really important it, to know is that when you put a plugin into Pro Tools, Pro Tools knows how much latency that plugin introduces into the mix. So therefore it can, it can compensate for it. Mm -hmm. So you can put plugins into the mix and as long as you go to options, Delay compensation. As long as that's on, you can load up a number of different plugins. You can go. You can break that, but you you know you have to work hard to do it. You <laughs> as long as delay compensation's on, Pro Tools can compensate for the latency of the plugin because it knows because mm -hmm. our plugin designers have to report it. Now, um, nearly all of the uh, compressor and expander plugins that I can think of will report to this combined um, this combined gain reduction. Right, yeah. so I can't think of one that doesn't. However, the same cannot be said for the EQ curve. The, mm. it, it's a relatively new view, and so if I go over here, I'm going to show another bunch of inserts, and I'm going to put an E that I know isn't supported. So if I go here to EQ and I go to Blue Cat, which is actually a nice little EQ, um, and if I go to that, and if I change this blue cat, you can see that that doesn't change. Now you do have a visual indicator. That little green light in, in the EQ area just turned red or orange, mm. which means that not all of the EQ plugins in that track support this feature. So you are seeing some, you, you, you may not be seeing everything. Now if I get rid of this, no insert, great, boom. And now that turns green again saying, everything you you can trust this view to show you a complete um report of all your eqs anders keep me honest is there any dynamic plugin expanders or compressors limiters or gates that doesn't report to the main meter what about the wave stuff i thought it did um okay. you'd have Some to check me on it yeah i'm i'm, I'm unsure i don't have i, I have well, a lot of wave plug <laughs> plugins but i don't have them installed at all right now <laughs> nice uh we'll check it if, if it turns out that that that's wrong we'll 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 issue a disclaimer on the next show something yep. in my mind which is why i asked the question something in my mind says there was one that i've seen that doesn't report that data but it, it was the eq one that i that specifically i there's i think there's a couple of eqs EQ that, I've for used sure, that yeah. don't yeah there's, don't there's report well, that it's it's a fairly new feature, and, and EQs are, are building in it um, as as it goes on. So so it'll be more and more of a useful yeah. feature. It's already a useful feature, mm -hmm. um, but it'll it'll become more and more useful as as plugins get versioned up. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's worth mentioning for people that are listening to this to go and load up their favorite EQ pro plugin, and if it doesn't report it, it's not that the software is broken. It's because it just hasn't integrated. Yeah, that, has, that the yeah, dev hasn't in integrated mm -hmm. that feature yet. Yep. Okay. Good point. Responding. I found one of the units that doesn't respond, which is Gatey Weighty um, by Boz Labs. Which ah, is, Gatey Weighty. Which wow, is that's a, a good one. It's a I wonderful also, gate. I love it. <clears throat> and it doesn't report. It doesn't report to the um, no to the metering. No. I, wow. I'm trying to load up the SSL bus compressor as well that I, I don't think does either. But my system's locked up. I I found a couple of Prime Studio ones that don't work either. For the gain reduction, meter. yeah. Mm. For the gain reduction, oh. yeah. Okay. Okay. So the next question then is: um, it, th This one pops up a lot. Can we talk about M1 support, Andy? Because I think you, I sure. think you're the only one who's uniquely qualified to talk about that one. <clears throat> yes. So, um, so here's here's just a couple things. Um, when you th when you think about upgrading. Um, it's important to know what's supported and what's tested. Um, and, and it's sometimes useful to think of every configuration is falling into one of three categories. One is officially supported, which means we've tested it, we've tested it thoroughly, 
and we believe that it works and we're going to stand by that. That's officially supported. And so if you go mm-hmm. to your your Pro Tools um, compatibility documents, that is a, that's a list of officially supported systems tested, right? Then there's other stuff that's officially unsupported, which has been tested and we know that it doesn't work. Right. So, th- for example, some older control surfaces, you know, things like, you know, versions that are in incom- we know are incompatible with old operating systems, things like that. That's officially unsupported. And then there's a third area, which is. Untested. Right. Uh, and by the way, this is this is Andy Hagerman's version of this. There's this isn't official avid terminology, but you can't test everything. And there are things that are untested. They're unsupported because they're untested, but they might work, mm. right? And and t- a lot of people will jump into untested waters, hoping that it works, yeah. right? Um, and, and very often it does, mm. right? Sometimes it sometimes it doesn't, right? And and of course, um, you know, Mac operating systems are probably the biggest culprit where it nags you to to up- update your your operating system, so you do it, and you know one time out of three you wind up deeply regretting it mm-hmm. because and you, know, back. You, you, you have to roll it back and mm-hmm. do all those things. Um, when it comes to M1, that is something that you can count on that's being tested I- at Abbott. And as soon as we feel comfortable that everything is is going to work and it's rock solid and we're going to stand behind it and we've mm-hmm. tested it in a number of different scenarios and we've got the software that supports it in the whole nine yards, then it will be officially supported. Until then you're rolling the dice. Exactly, and I think that what you're saying here is also a very, very important point because I get a lot of students coming to me in my studio and they will ask me about the particular configuration or something, Mm -hmm. or they are having massive stability issues. And then I ask them, what are they using? And they say, yeah, I use him. I use a Hackintosh or something. And (laughs) of course, maybe you you get people to run, Pro Tools to run, you can start mm-hmm. Pro Tools, uh, but that doesn't really mean that all of the features are working. And every once in a while, it will crash for you because it's not compatible or something else. Or if you're, for instance, using cracked plugins, just yeah, because yeah. they start oh. doesn't mean that they actually work. And they're probably doing something to your system that causes it not to work properly. And and uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't try to run uh, Pro Tools on, on a C64 or something. So you get one of the systems that are actually compatible and, and well, run we've, it we've had as close as possible. We've had Doom running on a pregnancy test, so why can't we have Pro Tools on a C64? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we had Doom running on a fridge. <laughs> Anything's possible, but it, it, uh, uh, it's an it's an important point though because what happens with one person is not going to happen with everybody, is it? There's no parity because not everybody's using exactly the same computer with exactly the right. same software with exactly the same OS. Uh, you know, and, everyone. And, and is the other different. thing too is <clears throat> is that you not only have to make sure that you know you're using the right version of Pro Tools for your operating system and your hardware and so on and so forth. But you need before you jump up and upgrade, you need to make sure that all the plugins that you use have similarly mm-hmm. done their due diligence and tested yeah. because having an out of date plugin can cause all manner of bizarre behavior, yeah. right? And 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 it can be a problem. Now let me because I can't shut up. Let me show you something. <laughs> um while we're talking about that, so uh, I mean, uh, drivers for your interface is also crucial. Yeah. Sure, completely. <laughs> yeah. So, so here is the uh, Pro Tools system requires uh, system requirements and compatibility doc, which every Pro Tools user that I know has it bookmarked, right? Because sometimes finding things on the Avid website can can be time consuming. Let's put let's say that. Now, this is one button that a lot of people don't push subscribe (laughs) and what subscribe will do is it will allow you to you can put in your 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 name and your email address once you submit it then you'll get an email one of our tests is finished and we're ready to publish a new operating system Mm. new hardware new software all that stuff it'll push that notification to you you don't have to go i wonder i wonder if that's upgraded or not let me go to this website and do you know and, and check it out you'll be actively contacted by Avid and told, hey, just so you know, this has changed, um, you know, and, and you'll get an email just saying this page has changed and it's a link that you click and you can see 
on the page what's changed. So every you know people who are in the the technical support part of the world um, subscribing to pages is is their lifeblood mm -hmm. because you can't you can't check a whole bunch of different pages. But if you subscribe to them, you'll get that notification pushed to you. Yeah, so That's it's great. so it, it's a, it's almost like a two step process, isn't it? If you want if you're wanting to upgrade to the to the latest thing, it's not just whether the software will work that that the basic app. It's whether all of your other tools are sure. also going to move with it. So it's not just a case of one thing; everything has to follow. So, how many times have we upgraded our software and then realized that our interface just turned into a boat anchor? <laughs> I mean, I mean, that hasn't happened to me, <laughs> thankfully. Oh, really? I, God, you're I've, lucky. I've had it oh. with, S, with SSL's Nucleus, where, 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 I've, where I've, the interface I've, manufacturer stopped supporting the interface side. So an mm -hmm. upgrade, I lost half of the functionality of the unit. Yep. Well, when, when you uh, when I uh, stopped and think for a while, of course that's happened to me. I have a lot of <laughs> old <laughs> old M boxes and, and stuff that I can't sure, use anymore. Right, yeah. The Diggy is uh, 002 and, and stuff like that. But I was aware of that before I upgraded, yeah. so it wasn't sure. a surprise for me. No, and, and you're not forced into upgrading, are you? And I, I know studios that are still working on OS X Tiger with Pro Tools 7 because it's rock solid. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So if it works for you, there's no reason to move until the, the new thing gives you a thing that you can't live without right yep. right mm. I will say this that you know there's there's a lot of systems that I see that are still on Pro Tools 10 because the, the system requirements changed to you know 64-bit and AX plugins and, and there was a lot of changes that happened yeah, with 11 yeah. and I think that the argument for staying on such an old version is weakening because there are so many stable versions since Pro Tools mm -hmm. 11 and features like freeze, mm -hmm. um, commit, um, you know, clip, uh, clip groups, folder tracks. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's starting to stack up. It's like, man, the amount of time that I save now mm -hmm. yeah. by using these latest tools yeah. is, is worth, worth the upgrade. Do you know, clip, clip groups is, um, it, it, we can jump onto another subject that was asked about. It's, it's just the word clip. Group has nothing to do with it. Um, it was, can we have a clip-based gain option on the main dashboard? Um, which kind of doesn't make sense having it on the dashboard because clip-based gain is clip-based. <laughs> it's gain that's clip-based, right? So you have it on the clip. Uh, can someone show that? Because I can't right now. <laughs> um. Anders, do you want to do it yeah. or you want me to? Ah, uh, no, I I can I can do it. Um, um, so let me just show you my screen here. So, uh, the 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 clip base um, or the clip gain has a couple of uh, uh, little shortcuts uh, that you can that can use that are really really useful, um, or uh, you can find them in the menus as well. But I like to use shortcuts, so I'm using Control Shift equals to display the static clip gain, which is basically what, what Dave said here, mm -hmm. uh, so that I can make a, a clip a, a louder or or softer just by, by pulling this lever here. And option clicking, like with most stuff in Pro Tools, resets it to 0 dB. Yeah. And, and, um, that's the, and that's the input gain. It's worth stating that's the input gain for the file, essentially, isn't it? The exactly, internal gain structure of the file. Right, so, so if you think about SignalFlow, hmm. The last thing, almost the last thing on a track is the main fader. Mm -hmm. It's after all of your inserts, all of this stuff. It's, it's, yeah. it's the only thing after it is panning, right? Yes. Um, clip gain is directly before after the, drive, yeah. the first insert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing right there is you're, you're changing the level of the signal that's hitting all your plugins. It's yeah. essentially and your trim control coming in from tape. Yeah, but what, exactly what, right. What, yep. what a lot of people uh, forget is about the other uh, function, which is the clip gain line, which looks like uh, a bit of, a, of an automation lane where mm. I can go in and dynamically uh, alter the, the, the gain of the clip. And this is, of course, as you said, before the first plugin, so I can drive a, a compressor harder or something. Mm -hmm. And I, I just love the clip gain line. It, it gives me so much control. And uh, when I want to add, edit uh, uh, voiceovers and stuff and have them in, in the face, uh, this is the, the perfect tool for that. Cool. So there's a, uh, there's a bunch of, of um, shortcuts that will help you work with this. Um, 
Do you want to do, uh, Andy? Yeah. yeah, let me go ahead and show, show this. So, so a couple things. Um, what Anders showed, let me go ahead and I'll go ahead and make this track a bit taller. Let's just doink. Come on. There we go. Um, and I'll go into my waveform view. There we go. Boom. All right, so, so here's a, a big view of, of a clip. So you can see here's at the very bottom is my, my, my clip gain. Right, so I can I can change that. Um, that's my again what what Anders said the, the static clip gain, if you will. And then in the mm. here I've got my clip gain line, which sometimes I find extremely annoying because <laughs> it, it tends to be very close to other important information. So being able to show and hide this is is important. Now Anders uses shortcuts, and when you're talking about clip gain, your best friend is Shift Control. Just remember Shift Control, and you're you're halfway home. If you don't remember shift control, then if you go to view and you go to clip, you have clip gain line that you can show or hide. And I just hit it. And if I go to view, I go to clip, clip gain info is gonna get rid of that little uh, static value at the bottom. Now, I don't use the static value at the bottom that much. I use the clip gain line quite a bit. And the shortcut to show and hide this is shift control and the negative sing symbol in the uh, in the QWERTY keyboard, not on, on numeric keyboard. So it's uh, shift, control, and then the minus sign. Now, if you want to, you can nudge this. Shift, control, and the up and down arrow will nudge up by increments. If you want, if you have a mouse with a scroll wheel, shift, control, and the scroll wheel will allow you to go up and down. If you want to nudge, I'm going to select an area right here, and I want to nudge this. Shift Control and Plus is going to nudge that clip. Minus will will nudge it backwards. So it's basically mm -hmm. the same as it's, it's the normal nudge. It's just add Shift Control to it. Yeah. The other this is the this is the one thing that people I think sometimes guess wrong. And if you ask somebody how do you delete a uh, clip gain, they'll hit the delete key but that's gonna do that, okay? So, shift, control, delete, deletes the clip gain within that selected area. So remember, you can do all of the stuff that you could possibly want with just shift, control, and another, Cause, another key. Because we're nudging events. The, you know, the breakpoints are events, aren't they? So it's, exactly right. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, it's, it's no different than, than volume. You can nudge mm -hmm. pretty much anything. Um, the one other really geeky thing is if you're using the arrow keys to nudge it up by increments, yes, this is this is that geeky show. You can go here to <laughs> set up preferences and you go to operation. Right. Um, editing? Editing, oh, I, I think. I don't yeah. remember what it is. There you go. It's in editing. Mm -hmm. um, if you go into editing, your clip gain nudge value is by default uh, half a dB. Um, rarely would you need to change it. Most people don't even realize that it can be changed. And I myself forgot what tab it's in. So that shows you how, how often it's used. But yes, you can you can decide that you want to um, change that, that resolution. If you want to, you can change it in your preferences window in the editing tab. Cool. So that that deals with clip-based gain. So there you go. Another feature that we've we've helped you, uh, we've, we've helped you request. And there we go. We've delivered. <laughs> and 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 it goes one step further. If you create a clip group, that clip group also has clip yeah. gain. Yeah. So if you've got you've got your drums all together, and not only do they edit at the same, but they also share a single clip gain line. Yeah, and in it, addition to whatever individual clip gains lines they have. And, and it's all relative, isn't it? It's relative to what the clip gain is of the clip within the group. So it's, That's correct. It, it's, yeah. 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 it doesn't normalize and snap everything together and then move mm -hmm. everything at once. It's all it, it's all relative. If that happened, we would just be called tools. <laughs> <laughs> we might not be able to get away from that. <laughs> you um, can't go Let's deal with just a couple more because this is turning into a bumper episode. Um, nice. Let's deal with, yeah, two more things. Um, cascading sends, a cascading sends shortcut. Now, what this says to me is expanded sends view. Anders, are you able to show this one? I said uh, no, my, I don't, I don't my, think it is. Uh, my I think the, won't open. 
I, I, I think th what they're asking are cascading Ex outputs. I think I think so too. So, uh, do you want me to show my uh, my screen on this? I don't think. Or are you doing it? Yeah, Andy? You, you go ahead. Go ahead, Andy. Okay. Uh, so I think I think the original poster was talking about uh, cascading sends or cascading outputs, and you can see all of my tracks here are, are using the same main output here. And I, if I wanted to cascade the 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 outputs of all of my tracks, meaning mm. that they would have output one, two, the next track would have three, four, and so on, I could hold uh, shift option control and select my the, the output that I wanted to start on and uh, no I'm saying this the wrong way now <laughs> that's right uh, it's a uh, if you hold shift option command and select gotcha. the the um, the first output you want to have now I just built a, a stupid mistake here I'm sorry about this guys uh, let let me do this again <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so if you want shift, shift option command will do to selected tracks. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so if I want to do it on all of my tracks, I would hold option command and yep. select the first uh, output that I wanted to have, and it will do then to all of my tracks. Select the next possible output and set that. That looks a bit weird on my system right now, but uh, that's this, actually what happened. This this was about now, sends. This this question was about sends though, cascading sends. Mm -hmm. And try this, Anders. I don't mm -hmm. believe you can. Uh, so you mean uh, it's cascading uh, ascend uh, like uh, this yeah. guy? Uh, yeah, it, you can. It's just option okay. command and uh, and mm -hmm. select the sen send and it will uh, it will do it on sense. Yes. There See, this go. this is an inter interesting thing about interacting with forums, isn't it? It's like what what does the term that the user is using? mean to them versus what does it mean to us mm -hmm. you know because you you t you're taking cascading in a different context to me no I've, well i mean i i think both of you are are, are reading it I, I i read it the way that anders did that it was mm. cascading send assignments but i think you're looking at a a an expanded sense view, which is something you can also do. But yeah, I was I was looking in terms of you, you know you can you can set the the windows to cascade and then they cascade oh, like wow, that. Of course, and that's making me think that you know it's how can I see multiple sends? You know, almost like an inline mixer. Uh, how can we show all of those on on the main mixer window? Oh, you you mean it like uh, like having all of your tracks. Uh, displaying all of the sense in their expanded sense. Yeah. So if you, you if like you that? drag if you yeah. drag your your bus three and four underneath one and two, five and six underneath four and three and four. So if you drag oh, them so over, you, so you meant you meant it like this, okay? Yeah. That that's what I think it was all about. Because I mean, what what your yeah. workflow was, you know, sort of st stacking outputs. Yeah. Um, you know that that's the way that I refer to it. Um, but in in the view, you can do all of your uh, expanded sense at, at once, so you can have yeah. them stacked <clears throat> on top of each other like this. But but you can't cascade that way. That the shortcut that Anders mm. did is a horizontal yeah. Yeah. cascade, mm -hmm. not a not a vertical one two three four five six seven. Which, um, which is making me think that the word was wrong. Um, so I'm trying to infer what the correct you know what the intention of the post was so uh have we solved it or, or not <laughs> i'm not sure we have <laughs> i'm not sure either i'm Let not sure know. we have but Let we've us shown know in the comments <laughs> but we've shown some interesting stuff um now do either of you guys have melodyne on your system <clears throat> i do yeah i do yeah so one of the questions was uh or one of the the comments was i'm sick of having to export to melodyne and back now I don't think I've exported to Melodyne since Melodyne version one, and I think it was even Melodyne version two that turned Melodyne into a plugin, right? So, if you are you able to show Melodyne, Andy, Anders, I'll let you do that. <laughs> Is it mine? Okay, <laughs> um, maybe I don't have anything in this session that I <laughs> can actually show it on. But um, that's, uh, well, just just load it onto a plugin will be fine. Um, you think? 
So, uh, or load okay. it onto an insert, sorry, and any of the inserts will be fine. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, load up uh, under what is it? It's a uh, pitch shift, of course. Um, no. Um, actually, I tend to it's, it's other, I think, I think I find it under other. Uh, otherwise, I look yeah, for it under Solemony. <coughs> yeah, it's, um, it's, in, Melod uh, it's yeah. in other. So we don't have to export to Melodyne anymore. You can do the whole thing on the timeline. And if you oh, click. Sorry about this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, if you click on the transfer button on the top left hand side that actually record and, and then hit play that records whatever's on the track oh my god that's very very loud on my end isn't it <laughs> sorry about it this it was great it's okay um, so I'll just uh, turn down the, the volume here so okay so yeah it, it records whatever's on the original track into Melodyne and you can do all of the all of the the editing actually within Pro Tools itself and the, the latest release of Pro Tools has also given us a free version of Belladyne, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Sorry for messing this up. It, my Pro Tools just went crazy with all of my sends and stuff that I did before. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it's sending out because I set all of my outputs to different oh. stuff. <laughs> it's, it's actually outputting through my Dolby Atmos speakers at full volume now. <laughs> I had it all Brilliant. around me. <laughs> Um, let me let me let me see if I can't. No. Uh, we'll, we'll edit this. Yeah, um, let's edit this out. So I'll, oh no, I'll this is gold. Me... <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, so can, now can I'm I'm set to go. Can uh, you, I, can, I can you, I can show it. Can you flip back over then? Yeah. So, sorry, I, <laughs> I started. <laughs> uh, that was a surprise to me. <laughs> okay, so I'm uh, pressing the transfer button. So yeah, tr so transfer and and then hit play. It records into Melodyne, uh, a, a thing to, to be aware of is that that's going to record an audio file into a Melodyne folder. Um, that's not going to be part of the audio files folder. So that's something to, to bear in mind if you wanted to, to move sessions around. Um, but So you don't have to export to an external program and then bring it back in. We can do it all on the timeline. But what's really quite cool with, with Melodyne is if you're doing, if, if you're wanting to uh, to pitch shift backing vocals, a large stack of backing vocals, you can load on a Melodyne for each of those tracks, mm -hmm. turn the transfer on for each of those tracks, and you can you can record them into each of the plugins all at the same the, time. The one thing to keep in mind though is that once you record that, once you capture, I know I'm not comfortable using the word record, once you capture okay. that audio into Melodyne, then the audio at that point, the source of that audio yeah. is Melodyne. Melodyne. So, 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 you know, any kind of editing that you do on on the clip, that's not what it's not going to affect anything from that point on. Yeah, right? you, you you want your Melodyne capture to be the last, the la after all of the editing's done, all of your fades right, are right. done. It's the last yep, step. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so that's Before so I, I would say that the integration of Melodyne is an ongoing process, right? <clears> so <throat> already we're seeing some more introduction uh, of 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 Melodyne integration with the convert to MIDI. Uh, yeah, sorry, that's uh, great. yeah, I was going to say convert to audio. No, 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 we already have that. Um, but you yeah, convert to MIDI, so you can bring in an audio track and then drag it to uh, a MIDI track, and Melodyne takes care of the job of analyzing it and then creating a MIDI file out of it. So we're already on that road. Now, mm -hmm. where that road ends is. We'll, we'll have to time will tell mm. and, and Melodyne is a wonderful tool and just just having That's it great. having it built in what's well, it built into Pro Tools included with a with a Pro Tools subscription uh, and a purchase now is just gold because yeah. um, I think the the best that we might have had up to this point um, for, for a door integration is logic and flex pitch which is not very pretty at all um, well, and keep in mind, we've always had some pitch control with Elastic Audio, so that's existed for a long time. Mm. It's not it's not as elegant a solution no. sometimes as as Melodyne, but mm. there's a lot of different ways that you can you know you can mm. take a note and you can yeah. you can fix it and do whatever I, you need. I, to I do. think we've been incredibly lucky to, to to have that partnership. And one of the other things that was mentioned actually, why can't ADR be built into Pro Tools? And I'm thinking you you've got to leave some processes for some plugin companies to sell stuff, right? <laughs> Where it's you know it's 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 a whole big commerce. We don't want to take too much out of uh, out of developers' well, and, mouths. And, and, and the other thing too is um, one of the things I noticed as I was going through that that um, 
that thread is that for every five people that said I want this new feature there's another person saying why can't it be simpler mm -hmm. right and and if you added everything that everybody wants mm -hmm. you know you'd have this gigantic you know product um, that would probably be less useful than it is right now mm -hmm. and the other thing too remember every new feature takes time and it takes money and some of these features mm -hmm. you know if you added for example um, you know a, a, a new let's say you know some new virtual instrument for whatever reason that was very exp expensive or whatever that would raise the product uh, price of Pro Tools for everybody mm. right and so you know we have to make sure that the things that we add to Pro Tools have as much broad benefit as possible um, but, well, and, this and, and again, let other people play. You know, in the in the ecosystem of of, of Avid. Well, this is one of my big uh, kind of reminders to people who are constantly asking for you know when's M1 support coming. It's like a Apple have just released this new brand new technology, and I'm, I'm, it, it's nice that, that Avid are testing it actually. But surely there's got to be a level of inter a, a adoption, you know, user adoption, before it's worth it for a developer to actually develop for a platform. You know. With years of console history tells us that if if stuff isn't selling, platforms aren't selling. There's no people can't make money from that, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm. I think we should wrap it up. I th this is bumper. <laughs> <laughs> we we really could just go on and on and on and on and on. We could, exactly. we could, yeah. yeah. But um. Yeah, but I, but we I'm, hope that you've enjoyed this five-hour <laughs> Pro Tools Answers marathon. Yeah, I need to lie down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, hopefully that was really enjoyable for you guys. Really interesting for for us, I think. Right? <laughs> that was, yeah, that was great fun to go through. Um, oh yeah. So all it leaves me to say is thank you very much to Andy. You're very welcome. Thank you very much to Anders. Thank you very much. <laughs> if you've enjoyed what we're doing and you like what we're doing, please subscribe to the videos. Uh, hit that bell icon so you get the, the latest videos when they release. Um, if you have any questions about Pro Tools and you want support with, uh, for, for yourself as a user, that official Avid Pro Tools forum is there for you. I'll stick a link in the description so you can go straight there, join it. Um, it's a really great community. Um, and maybe we'll feature your question in one of the subsequent ep episodes of Pro Tools Answers. So thanks to the guys. Thank you for your, uh, thank you to you for watching. Uh, my name's Dave. This is Pro Tools Answers and we're out. <laughs>